first edition of DCD White Space. Uh, my name's Bill Boyle, and we have Peter Judge and Max Bolax with us. And we're going to talk data centers. Max, yes. What's the big story of the week? Not the biggest story of the week. We'll come to that later. But ease us in gently with a nice big story. All right. Well, yeah. The story I liked was about uh, Nokia finally merging, buying. Alcatel Lucent. Now, Nokia is, is that Nokia? Alcatel Lucent is doing badly. I mean, they're worth like, what, $10 billion or something. But this means uh, they automatically become the second largest telecoms equipment manufacturer in the world, uh, as big as Ericsson, and uh, they get Nokia get Bell Labs. What? Anyway, well, so, you know sure how, so you know the French, right? The French government is notoriously protective of domestic industries. This is why they didn't sell uh, Daily Motion to Yahoo. This is why they sort of like keep ring fencing things like ATOS. And this is why the French government didn't want Alta Lucent to be sold. And Nokia had to promise that they're going to keep the jobs and the R&D in France, that they're not going to do the cuts. So, uh, well, Alta Lucent has cut until there's nothing to cut anymore for the past three years. Uh, Nokia will have to make some cuts of their own, so the Finns are somewhat un unhappy now because they know like this, this, this big hammer is coming through. So what can what sort of phoenix can rise from these particular issues then? A massive <laughs> NFV shaped phoenix. Ah, oh, right, and if you're right. Tell us yes. more about that. That's interesting. Nokia. I mean, I mean, Ericsson is selling servers, I believe Nokia is selling servers, and, and I mean, if anything, this is, it's only going to ramp up. It's actually, I like to loosen this. Is, is, is has, has a very serious sort of like yeah. server lineup and, 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 and is very good on the SDN side and NFV side of things, while Nokia is good with basic things like base stations and you know like all of the things I don't know the names for. <laughs> good some telecom networks. Yeah. Yeah. Those things. Forget, that, 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 yes. Forget phones. Forget Wellington boots. All the things that Nokia has made in the past. Um, Nokia made Wellington boots. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, they they now just make networks for telecom companies, and they've now bought uh, Alcatel Lucent, um, and this, yeah, okay. But do data centre people care about these telecom networks? Uh, I think they do, because everything is a data centre. So basically, I went to an Intel event, I think a couple of years ago, and they were talking about putting servers under the base stations, because I think there is, there is some IT equipment there, but it's not a straight up server. And as, as things like near, Network function virtualization. As they're going to kick in, there will be like you know a couple of racks standing right under the base station, and but but they have to be they're, they're fairly specific. So like you know the signal processing mumbo jumbo is is tricky. Mumbo <laughs> jumbo. But it's going to be done in software. That's the main thing. It's going to be white boxes. Okay, let's move on, Peter. Do you want the big story? The big story. You now, want we're building up to bigger and bigger stories, guys. So just watch closely. Yes, frankly, this is the elephant in the room. <laughs> There is no, no other word for no, it. No, no, this is the elephant in the room. Yes, a small elephant. No, but no, hey. no, but maybe it's not big enough. <laughs> this, is the, this is the Hadoop elephant. Uh, um, I'll, I'll, right. Yes, uh, Hadoop being the software platform for big data, quotes, i.e. analytics, quotes. Essentially, all those kind of slight misnomers. Um, Hadoop is an open source infrastructure for processing data very quickly and conveniently by distributing the processing out within the data into a cluster of cheap hardware. Um, and that's, that's different because it's open source, because it's scalable, it's taken off massively. And uh, I've had no idea what's been going on in the rest of the industry at all this week because I've spent half the week in Brussels, in Belgium, hearing at the Hadoop Summit about what's going on with Hadoop. Um, data centre people should care because um, it, within another five years or so, according to admittedly somewhat biased uh, estimates, about half the data that an organisation has will be this kind of new data, the Internet of Things type of data, the sort of data that's flooding in that people are stashing away in the hope they can do something with it. Um, and if they don't, it, it turns into something that people call dark data, which I rather like the sound of. Um, unless they could start applying uh, the processing of Hadoop to turn it into something useful, to pull out from it insights that you didn't expect, and, uh, and all that sort of thing. 
Hadoop is massively protean. It kind of changes what it does. It does it's versatile. It does anything you want it to do. Um, and within the ecosystem, there are a ton of people making new things attached to it, which you simply cannot follow without a list of names in order to, that you can tell Spark from MapReduce from Impala or any of those other things. Yeah, th th there are at least three things going on that were of interest. Um, one is, uh, it's been going on for a while, uh, but, I heard, but there was a, a beautiful um, uh, Freudian slip that brought it into focus. Hadoop started out with a very batch processing idea that you would put stuff in it. I mean, the, the whole idea of Hadoop is that it's going to be quicker and cheaper and easier than an old-fashioned data warehouse where you, that, that is engineered to put stuff in and get reports out, you know, maybe in a week or a day, maybe. This Hadoop is meant to bring it back much quicker and so forth. But still, as created, Hadoop used batch processing, old-fashioned, slow batch processing, and in a language that people weren't particularly familiar with. Um, a lot of the effort going on in there is to do things that are a bit more like uh, traditional SQL database access and to get sort of real-time interaction going on instead of what somebody at one point in the thing accidentally sort of, um, they, they were talking about this and instead of the word batch they said bitch process. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think that, that kind of the attitude was sort of was the there. Dancing, the dancing uh, started like that. Problem. Highlights the problem, yeah. So moving on from that to something, you know, and so that, that was one issue. Another issue was the um, uh, the politics within the group, which I think we don't want to worry too much about. But poor old Hortonworks, uh, the uh, puritanical open source. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> stop sniggering at the back. The open source advocates within. Uh, Hadoop, um, they have created um, a, a club around themselves called ODP, which people promise that in order to stop dangerous diversification within uh, Hadoop, um, everybody should use the same uh, version of the Ap official Apache Hadoop standard with the same add-ons around it. Um, now, the Hortonworks rivals, Cloudera and MapR, are busily doing as much dangerous diversification as they can because that's the whole point of what Hadoop allows you to do. So, and they don't particularly want to join a group that requires them to use a standard management system called Ambari, which only works with Hortonworks' own platform. Right. So, ODP, um, if you talk to anybody within the club, is the thing that will save, end the nightmare of diversification and the danger of, um, di uh, of, of division. So what should the... But on the outside, people say, why do we need that? So which camp should our viewers be like, jumping into? Well, I don't know if they should be in any of them, really, because our, our readers are about building the data centres. and Do they mind what, what's going in those data centres when they, get, when they arrive? So why do these guys mind that? Okay, these guys mind because they're, they're the developers and the, uh, and, and the people building the stuff. Um, and for, for you lot, for your readers, white space listeners, I think long term, don't worry about the um, storm in a teacup, don't worry about the arguments within the Hadoop, Hadoop community. Um, in order to run this kind of stuff, data centres are going to have to be built in, you know, which will allow this sort of clustering. Um, and we'll have a different attitude to where the data storage should be. How that will actually emerge is a little hard to tell because no matter, because a lot of the time anyway, the, um, this idea of a distributed cluster is mapped out onto virtualized hardware anyway. But um, if something as crazy as a whole, uh, uh, as the amount of data you're owning, doubling, with a whole extra bunch of data as big as what you've already got that's been processed in a different way. If something like that is happening in the next few years, it's going to have some impact on your data centre and we, we'll have to keep looking at it to find out what that will be. And just to clarify in my mind, is this all structured data or does it include unstructured data? Unstructured is, where, is one of the big pluses that Hadoop offers. 
So it is unstructured. Yeah. So it is truly that enormous amount of information that people have got out of their data that people have got that they've never, never been able to uh, classify before or use before probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it, 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 like the whole ODB she sounds a little bit like you know corporate interest versus the open source. Mm -hmm. It's like open source wins. You can't fight it. If these people want to contribute, they want to do it for free, and they want to develop it. You, you have no tools to stop them. I mean, you can you can organize a hundred associations, but yes, yes, that's right. I mean, it's, if, if some of this diversification, if some of these options turn out not to work, well, they, they just die out. Yeah, yeah isn't that yeah. just innovation? Oh. This process. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or both. So yeah, and there was chocolate, of course, this was Belgium. Uh, we'll have that later. <laughs> and, right, <laughs> Max, any more stories? I've got a couple here that yes. are quite interesting. Yes, tell us yours, Bill. Uh, let's have a look at one. I met a really interesting, decent guy in data centre infrastructure what? management. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the headline of our story says, decent cannot meet inflated expectations. What you were saying was really interesting, because what he was, uh, he, he agreed that the market has been uh, massively hyped up. Right. He was saying, th don't think, feel thinking of it as a sort of pick and mix where you can go in and you can go, I'll have that bit of DSIM for to operate my P -O -P -O -E and I'll have a little bit of that, that'll help me with the cooling. He said, you can't think of it like that because if you think of it like that, it's not going to work. You've got to look carefully and he used an interesting analogy I haven't heard for a little while. He said, before you get your technical people in to start tearing your data centre apart, get the accountants in. So find out which way you want to move, you want, you want your business to go before you then say, well, hang on a minute. And then don't just try and pick and mix because DSIM isn't yet at that open source stage where you can do the Hadoop thing and pick and mix. You have to decide on one or two of the biggest suppliers at the moment. So what that says to me is beware. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it says uh, DSIM is at a very, very early stage of maturation. Right. But it's sort of like it's a lifestyle choice, right? I suppose either you buy into it yeah. and you go in, you know, like all the way, or you just stay yeah. away for, from it until until it gets a little bit big. Yes, yeah. But we'll be looking at that in the next album, of course. Right, yes. We should be writing much, lots about it. We're out there looking at DSIM, so you have to as well. Yes, yeah, come to us with your decent thoughts. Yes. Um, if I can highlight the story, so well, yeah. the, my favourite story of the week, unfortunately, we haven't covered it because it's not quite our field, but there was a man in, uh, I don't remember, it was a multi-state um, lottery. And Ohio? Uh, yeah, might Florida? Be Ohio. It's not the Florida. Virginia. Uh, but there, there is a man. Uh, he used to do security for a multi-state lottery and I mean being uh, close to so much money this idea came into his head and he actually did it, he wrecked the lots where he won 14 million pounds using malware, brought it in on a memory stick, self-destructive malware, nobody knew what happened, 14 million, <laughs> bam! Uh, that was just what? glorious. But, I mean, what always surprised me was why didn't he give it away with more? I mean, 14 million, I would have got away with a lot more than that. I, uh, I, 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 I can deal with 14 so, million. Was, you, do you remember this, Peter, do you remember this, the introduction to the, one of the stories there? Yes. Oh, yes. It said some people are born lucky, some people become lucky, and some people create their luck with self-destructive malware on a USB stick. <laughs> <laughs> the other naked security blog. Naked security. Yes. And I don't think he is so far. He's less. No. Anyway, he's a very, a very, really good blog to read. X, one of the better security blogs. Yeah, yeah, and the story is is, is great. Is it? The other one uh, was the. I mean, the one I particularly, I particularly like. I've been kind of following it for a little while. Is this? The, the government G Cloud, yes. and there were two things are happening this this the last couple of weeks, and, and Peter and I wrote a story about it that it just puzzled me. I don't know, it still puzzles me. The UK points Cabinet Office Digital Leader, and the very first sentence of, this, of our story was, Colin Bullock's mission, he's the new digital leader, is to weed out legacy systems and lead public sector IT towards the cloud. And then well, there was another story in Forbes by Ben Keeps, uh, which, which I, I more tend to have been far truer in that the G Cloud stands for gone. In that, what's happening is because the G Cloud began to be, in an essence, in a nutshell, became, be, was becoming a competitor to the other, to the other private clouds, to the other public clouds, like you know the Amazons and the Googles. That, that pressure has been brought on there to just get rid of it and go away, and it's beginning to disappear. It, or the money is just not there. I mean, the figure they gave uh, of the amount of money going through the, to the G Cloud at the moment 
was something like 220 million? Yes. Which is, which is yes. Buttons, but buttons, yes. fragments of buttons. Yes, at a conference I was at uh, last month, uh, the, the spokesman stood up and said, it's not gone away, it's done whatever it was, million. I said, I, 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 I thought you, you called it the same figure. Yeah. 220 million. 220 and million. Just, and yes, it could be so much more. Wait, but how, how much do we expect the government to spend on cloud? Well, on IT generally, if it, did, if it did all its IT out there, it would be a lot of money. The thing is, if, they brought, if the systems integrators were, made, were, were, were going on and they weren't working away on things like the, um, IT, the NHS IT project, etc., and all the other, and that wasn't one of the biggest failures, there were far bigger failures of the government, um, passport schemes and goodness knows what, oh, yeah. those are billions, that's billions of pounds of the public money just dropped down the gutter today, yes. weekend, weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, instead of the government being able to, I mean, I thought it was a fantastic idea. Yeah. But it just seems to be dropping away. I think we should maybe look at that a bit further down the line. Yeah. Just think of the data centres that would be involved in that, publicly uh, yes. run data centres. Good. There was a good party this week. In so Belgium? Our man, no, our, no, our man Nick Booth went to Slough. Oh, of Slough, course, right. Um, where Equinix was formally opening its LD6 data centre. Um, what else to say about that? Uh, Big. It's big. It's in slow. Beautiful. Sorry, yes. Equinix. And mm. it's we couldn't get to the party, but I was quite ill. Actually. We, we sent our best man. We sent Nick Booth, and he uh, told us all about it. And he's interviewed uh, the chief executive. Steve Smith. And that will be appearing in the next couple of days. Yep. So lots, lots going on there. And um, Max, you, um, something you, you wrote that I, that I was interested in was about the co-location and the size of the colo market. Oh yes, so we've, we've had several contributors saying that the days of the collocation market are numbered. Okay, it's not quite going away, but it's gonna, gonna become smaller rather than larger. And then 451 Research says, oh no, wait, it's gonna be like... I don't remember the percentage, but like... Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna grow considerably in the next two years. By 2017, I think it's gonna make something like uh, either 32 or 36 billion annually, so sort of like uh, led by Equinix and Digital Realty. And uh, the Asia Pacific market is actually growing faster than the European market. It has already eclipsed the European market, and, it's, and it is, uh, that's it. We're sort of we're going down. So, collocation isn't going away. It's just collocation isn't going away, at least according to some analysts. It's going east. Yes. It's so that's pretty much been our week, I think. It's been a pretty exciting week, is not it? It's been a lot happening. To, to round off, do you two want to know what the most um, read and talked about stories were on the website? Oh, yes, please. As far as I can tell, looking at the stats, um, it's the gear. The, the gear. Emerson. Genesa, generators. UPSs. Oh, uh, PGU. Evaporative free cooling units from Emerson. All right. People have been very interested to hear about that. And the top video on the site um, was in from our New York event where Drew spoke to a man who builds P power distribution units and had one in and his he had hand. One, he was demonstrating <laughs> his power. Yeah, you could just yes. feel the passion, you know, the yeah. way he handles it. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. And um, that's where we're getting really, we're warming up quite nicely. I think, we better, I think this is where we better call it White Space day. finishes off for this week. Uh, we'll be appearing with you every week. Uh, Look at those videos on the site uh, from next week, and we will see you next. Peter. Thank you.